Hello, welcome to the parish update. We find ourselves in the 16th week of ordinary time. And in this 16th week, we hear readings about the Good Shepherd in a way. It doesn't outright say Good Shepherd, but Jeremiah, you know, he was, um, he was a prophet during a time of five different kings and each king progressively got worse. They were bad leaders, right? And then, and then we had, um, in Jesus' time, at that time even, he says they were um, people without a shepherd, right? He, his heart was breaking for them, in other words. And so uh, he tirelessly worked to be a good shepherd to the people of Israel and in, in exchange and in turn for the world, right? And so, so he is our ultimate good shepherd par excellence. And yesterday we had the opportunity to um, be present at the ordination of our new auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Las Vegas. Our diocese is a young diocese, only 25 and a half years old, and we've been blessed to have an auxiliary bishop, which is a big um, uh, acknowledgement by Rome, the size of our diocese and the needs of our diocese. So um, the Bishop uh, Tom, George Leo Thomas uh, co-consecrated uh, Bishop Gregory Gordon as our auxiliary bishop here um, yesterday. And it was a wonderful event held at the Shrine of the Most Holy Redeemer down in the Strip. Um, unfortunately, it was because of limited seating. Uh, it was all by invitation only. So the clergy of the diocese was there. There were 18 bishops from around the area, including Cardinal Mahoney, retired Cardinal Mahoney, as well as um, the Archbishop of San Francisco, our Metropolitan Archbishop who oversees our area, as well as uh, Bishop Archbishop Gomez from LA was there. So it was a, a very uh, beautiful welcome for uh, uh, once Monsignor Greg Gordon, now uh, Bishop Gordon, into the uh, College of Bishops. It was beautiful to, to be there and witness and pray for him and his future ministry. And when we hear the readings today, we pray that he is a good shepherd, right? That he continues to be the good shepherd we know that he has been, that he continues down that path. And in our own world, we can see uh, people who we might think are shepherds, right, because of their leadership roles. And sometimes people look at politicians. But we have to remember in the United States, uh, there has been a, a separation of church and state. And so we don't look at politicians as leading our church ever, right? And that's what you have to remember. There are secular authorities over secular things. We do hope that our faith and our religion informs the people we elect to represent us. And that's what's important is that you let your uh, representatives know what your needs are, what, your, um, what you think is worth fighting for. And so I always say to people who are troubled with their leadership in the secular world, that it's our job as faithful citizens, as the baptized, to pass on our faith by helping our legislators know what is morally right and what is good. And ultimately, it's, they represent us. Hopefully, they will represent us, but it's ultimately on their conscience for the decisions they make. And so, speaking of shepherds, we have a new shepherd in regards to our parish. We have uh, Father Roy Curian is here, and he's back from his vacation. And so this weekend, we had marked as the weekend to welcome him officially to the parish. So he'll be here at all the masses. And please uh, take time to welcome him and introduce yourself to him. It'll probably take him a little while to get to know everyone. But today, uh, join him in the youth room for refreshments. Kathy Terensky, our director of faith formation for children, has an, an urgent request. We are short of catechists for this fall's formation classes for our uh, young people. And I do know that they still need help with the youth ministry as well for the teenagers. So if you, I, I invite you to pray about what you're called to do. Um, and you might be called to be um, a catechist, that is a teacher of faith. And if that's the case, know that they will give you the tools you need. They will give you the training you need to do that. 
uh, we just ask that you respond soon. Uh, pray about it and respond soon because as all volunteers are required to go through a background check here in the Diocese of Las Vegas, that would be the case for any new catechists that are not already volunteers here at the parish. Um, it's a beautiful ministry. I, after I was confirmed, I had the opportunity to be a catechist as a t teenager, really. Uh, I, I was a catechist assistant, and it was a beautiful thing to help that teacher teach third graders and fourth graders their faith. And do know that sometimes we, we don't just throw you in headlong. Uh, they, uh, sometimes it's that you start out as an assistant till you get your grounding and your feet. So please, if you feel like you're called to this ministry, God might be calling you, please uh, respond by exploring it and talking to Kathy Terensky. Her phone number is in the bulletin, or you can call the main office to be connected to her. God bless, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Greetings from the Faith Formation Office. We are eagerly planning our faith formation schedule for this coming year, academic year, 12, 20, 21, 22, and are delighted that we will be welcoming the children back to in-person sessions. Sessions will be held on Mondays through Thursdays, either at 4 p.m. or at 6 p.m., beginning the week of September 20th. If you have not yet registered your child or your children, Please do so as soon as possible to be assured of a seat. We already have many children registered. However, we are in need of catechists and assistants. Many of our catechists have been teaching for years and are now choosing to retire. I thank them for their dedication to the children and to the program. Now it's time for new people to step forward. You perhaps. I ask you to please consider this ministry of catechesis to the children of St. John Newman Parish. There will be ongoing training and regular catechist meetings to help you throughout the year. If you would like more information about being a catechist, please contact me, Kathy Trewinski, in the Faith Formation Office. I will be happy to speak with you. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you. Well, VBS is coming in Round Mountain. And can you help us with some of the things we're going to need to have a fantastic week? There's a wish list in this weekend's bulletin. Please bring your purchases to the youth room by July 23rd. Thank you. Just a reminder, our summer blood drive is coming up on August 1st. If you'll remember our winter blood drive, we totally hit our goals, and we were able to give a great gift to the community. Let's continue that awesome tradition with our summer blood drive. It's easy to make an appointment by signing up online by visiting our parish website at sjnc.org and look for the link that will take you to the vitalant.org website. Or you can easily sign up by calling the parish office to make an appointment. Thank you in advance. Natural Family Planning Awareness Week is July 25th through 31st. Natural family planning methods help husband and wife honor God's plan for their marriage. Learning how to live in harmony with God's design is the mission of NFP education. For more information, visit these helpful links, livethelove.org and ccli.org. These links can be found on our parish website at sjnc.org. Well, early indicators would suggest that St. John Newman is ready for a party. Thank you to people that have already been bringing in their silent auction donations and gala donations. This is really exciting news. So keep all that wonderful stuff coming and we will have an amazing event this October. Any questions, give us a call at the parish office and keep an eye open and an ear open for more exciting details for this year's gala.